Howdy my totally tubular gamers, it is that time again. We are doing another ranking video and today's ranking video is of the Banjo-Kazooie series. Yes, the Banjo-Kazooie series, all developed by Rareware. A series that I hold very near and dear to my heart and I know that a lot of people do as well. Not only fans of platformers but fans of a couple other genres will also like the Banjo-Kazooie series and we'll be looking at every Banjo-Kazooie game release. Like, it, whether it's a main game or a spin-off or it doesn't matter. We're looking at all of them. There is enough of them to do a ranking. And while I'm not the biggest fan of all of them, a lot of these games I hold very near and dear to my heart. And I know a lot of people do as well. And, well, this is going to be interesting, that's for sure. Let's just get right into it with number five. And at number five, we have Banjo Pilot. Yeah, Banjo Pilot really isn't a very good game. Now, I don't really have all that much to say about it. I haven't played all that much of it. But what I did play, I really did not like. Like, this is a very substandard, mediocre, just kind of bad racing game, I'm not going to lie. Like, with a decent character roster of Banjo characters, and I guess the graphics are kind of nice, but like, the sound isn't very good, and the tracks are pretty boring, that just flying around really isn't that fun, the controls are not the best. And I just don't really see much in this game. Like, it's not as exciting as Mario Kart. It doesn't control anywhere near as good as, like, Diddy Kong Racing. And it's not even half as good as Diddy Kong Racing. And Diddy Kong Racing would later be re-released on the DS. And I think that is leagues better than this. And something that I've never understood, even as a kid, is when you fly over grass, you slow down. Like, what? How does that make any sense? You're flying over grass. I mean, I guess in F-Zero, the same thing happens when you hover over dirt, but I mean, that's like the future. This is a plane. Like, how you slow down flying over... Anyway, Banjo Pilot, really not a big fan of this game. Like, I just thought it was really benign and just kind of uninspired, and it just did not do anything for me. And if you really like Banjo Pilot, then I, I guess you can tell me about it in the comments, but me personally, no. I, I didn't really like Banjo Pilot. And at number 4 we have Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, the game that arguably just killed the series and is probably one of the most disappointing sequels to any game ever released. But it's not the worst Banjo-Kazooie as I think this game is better than Banjo-Pilot, but, but not by much to be honest. I think Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is a very mediocre, shallow game as well that not only kind of insults Banjo-Kazooie, and just has really no right being a Banjo-Kazooie game as it just plays nothing like the other games. With a decent enough story of Gruntilda coming back and like Log showing up this new character the Lord of Games and him making you build cars and do all these kind of repetitive games with them and little missions and these semi-open areas like it really just is not a Banjo-Kazooie game, first and foremost, but even by itself, I, I don't think it's that good of a game. While I do think building the cars was fun, and I think you could get really creative with that, I think that's probably the best aspect of the game, because I'll be honest, these missions were really repetitive, they got repetitive over time. I wasn't really a fan of any of the areas in this game, except Banjo-Land. And then the biggest thing, I just remember the physics were really bad in this game, they were really wonky, they were really clunky, and I just remember having a hard time with the physics. I don't like the graphics. I don't like the art style they chose. Freaking blockhead banjo. I just remember having a not fun time with the final boss, and really just... I just really wasn't a fan of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and I think that, again, it's just a very shallow game that ultimately kind of killed Banjo-Kazooie, and... I really am glad that Banjo now is in Smash and that is our latest memory of him because this this is not what I want to be my last memory of Banjo because th this is not very good. Anyway, on to the next game. At number three we have Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge on the Game Boy Advance. I know, yeah, I'm really putting this above nuts and bolts. Well, to be honest, while I haven't played a ton of this game either, I've definitely played more of it than Banjo Pilot, but I actually quite like Grunty's Revenge, and I think it's actually a bit of an underrated game, to be honest. Well, I know that the graphics are, well, they haven't aged all that great, but they're better than Banjo Pilot, and the kind of camera angle that's like this top-down thing could be a little weird at first, but I actually think that this is a really solid game. Like, 
it's definitely an underrated classic with a decent story of Banjo having to rescue Kazooie and going around time periods. Like, I think that's all fun, and I think the collectibles really are there. It's like a solid collectathon, and it's really bite sized on the Game Boy Advance, and I think it really took advantage of the Game Boy Advance. And while I know that nowadays we can have freaking Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy as a handheld game, I think for the time that this was the next best thing, and I think that it still holds up decently well. It had a few interesting mechanics to it, and I thought collecting stuff was quite fun, and the platforming, there wasn't as much as a normal Banjo-Kazooie game, but there was still a decent amount of platforming, and I can tell you this game sure as heck felt way more like a Banjo-Kazooie game than Nuts and Bolts did, that's for sure. And overall, I had a much more fun time playing this for a couple hours than I ever did with Nuts and Bolts, but yeah. Grunty's Revenge. And in the number two, we have Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, the original Banjo-Kazooie is only number two on here. I know, kind of a hot take, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, Banjo-Kazooie. The original Banjo-Kazooie really is just arguably the greatest 3D platformer on the 64, like that in the next game. But Banjo-Kazooie just really is such a fantastic 3D platformer that I've played through so many times and I'd argue that it's better than Mario 64 and better than most Mario games like it's one of the best collectathons all the collectibles are important they all feel great to find the levels are just outstanding the level design is peak 3D platformer it just doesn't get any better the re-releases on 360 slash Xbox one fix the camera so there's not even any camera issues the music is incredible the graphics were great for the time the story is basic it is about you rescuing Tui from Gruntilda I still quite liked it the game is extremely charming everything has the eyeballs love that have always loved that this is peak rareware and Banjo-Kazooie is just one of the most solid 3D platformers you'll ever find, period. And there really is not much to dislike with the game, to be honest. I, again, love all the levels. My favorite level has got to be Freezy Peak. Love the music there, too. And I just have always adored what this game did for 3D platformers and just how much fun I always have whenever I come back to it. And it's not even the longest game either, but because of how... It's not that long, but it's not too short either. You can always come back and replay it. And due to just the nature of the game, you don't have to get all the jiggies in the same order. You can get tons of them in different orders, especially once you get further and further in the game and you have more and more worlds. You can you can go to whatever world you pretty much want to halfway through the game and start getting jiggies in whatever order you want. And it just makes it much more replayable and all that much more fun. I love all the characters of Banjo-Kazooie. I love all the writing of Banjo-Kazooie, it's all really like way better than it has any right to be for a Nintendo 64 game, but here we are, it's still talked about to this day because it's just that great of a platformer, like it's just such a peak 90s game and it just holds up incredibly well, like it really holds up incredibly well and games like Ukulele really tried to capture what Banjo-Kazooie did and while I think that game was decent enough, I think it, it did not capture what Banjo-Kazooie did because what Banjo-Kazooie did was just borderline unheard of. It was just fantastic. But it's not number one. And at number one we have Banjo-Tooie. Yes, Banjo-Tooie. Now I know a lot of people that's not their number one. Their favorite is Kazooie and it's always going to be Kazooie and that's totally cool. But mine is Banjo-Tooie. I really liked what Banjo-Tooie did for the series. And I really think that Banjo-Tooie is arguably the greatest 3D platformer of all time. I'm, I'm serious. I quite liked the slightly darker story. I mean, I wasn't huge on bottles dying, but I liked the slightly darker story. I really liked all the writing in this game that was honestly just as good as the first games, if not better. I really liked all the characters. I liked how some came back. I liked the new ones. Yeah, I really liked the setting. I really liked the atmosphere of Banjo-Tooie. And then the gameplay. The gameplay of Banjo-Tooie feels like they just took everything that was good about the original Banjo-Kazooie and made it even bigger, more expansive, more in-depth. Like, you get to keep all your power-ups and moves and abilities from the original Banjo-Kazooie and you get to have even more new ones that are just way more expansive. And it's like all the levels are massive now. They went from these kind of littler areas that you could finish in maybe a good hour at most like now each level takes hours and each level just has so much to it and so much to explore.
each level is so vast and because of that there is a couple less than the first game and I know that some people they're not a fan of these vast levels they don't like how big they are and think they're kind of empty and there isn't a need for all this but I really quite liked it and I think that the levels that are good in Banjo-Tooie are really good like they're my favorite levels in the series if not 3D platformers in general particularly Witchy World and like Cloud Cuckoo Land I just these are like just some of my favorite levels in any game and the music oh music is so good in this game too love it just as much as the original game like I just really have even less to talk about for negatives with Banjo-Tooie than I did with even Kazooie I mean they're just fantastic sure the bosses are stupid easy I guess but Mr. Patches it doesn't get much more fun for a boss fight than him if you couldn't tell I'm like really a big fan of Banjo-Tooie I mean it it's just such a fun game to me and again not everyone's cup of tea there is backtracking I quite like the backtracking because I love going back to these levels I really like a lot of the levels sure uh, one or two of them aren't too great like glitter gulch mine but regardless I still had just a fantastic time with the game and every time I've come back to Banjo Tooie it's been nothing but a smile and the game is multiplayer even so I mean I guess that's a bonus and you can play all these fun little mini games but that's it for this video guys. Banjo-Tooie is my favorite Banjo-Kazooie game. Again, bit of a hot take I know. But, regardless, if you enjoyed this video, please like, please comment, subscribe, we got the Patreon, uh, comment what your favorite Banjo-Kazooie is, tell me what top 10 or top 5 or top whatever the next ranking video I should do is. Love to hear from you guys, always love to hear what people's favorites are in the comments. And uh, yeah, everyone have a fantastic Christmas, New Year. Valentine's Day, uh, President's Day, Labor Day, whatever holiday we're near now. See ya.